The Olympus EM1 Mark II oozes with the latest technology, so it might come as a surprise, even disappointment, to admit that I am not a techie, but a doer. Therefore, if you are the jury, these images are my events, and all shot between January and April 2017. However, I won't show you endless pictures of the camera, and certainly not myself. My technique is built on the tradition of film photography, basics that I learned 50 years ago, skills that are still relevant today. But that is not to presume that I am indifferent to the EM1 Mark II's latest features. This YouTube film is from a photographer who can produce a decent shot without being a slave to auto, or indeed technology. Any improved or new technology must benefit my images without the need to abandon those techniques I learned years ago, which I am certainly not going to suddenly throw out of the window in the name of automation. This hands-on review is where technical gobbledygook might say you can't, when in fact you can. I use the camera in a pure and simple way with perhaps an emphasis on the latter. Here, choosing subjects that are accessible to most photographers and not requiring a pass or special permit, or indeed a technique that takes years to master, experience of course accepted. I will stick to the basic Olympus camera, no accessories, but allowing myself the luxury of saving to RAW and adjusting in Lightroom. Whilst we might start together and finish together, what happens in the middle could be another matter, and in some respects not matter at all. I will keep this survey within my safety zone, landscape and architecture, and the nearest I got to action was a chance meeting with hang gliders on the summit of the Rikin, and then I could have kicked myself for not using the video facility. Whilst in Shropshire, I nipped down to Ironbridge. I had been there before, that's important for getting the light right, and so it proved. The sunlight penetrated up the Severn Valley on cue, illuminating the famous bridge to perfection. Dipping my toes carefully into the camera's technical credentials, I am immediately drawn to the higher number of pixels, video improvements, and especially its image stabilization, which is five axis. This image of St. Ethelreda's Church in Ely Place, Holborn, was handheld at a quarter of a second. Yes, a quarter of a second. But notice too how the sensor and in-camera digital processing has dealt superbly with the wide variation in exposure between the stained glass windows and interior. Normally, when working without flash, the low level of light will require a sturdy tripod, but they may not be allowed. Therefore, a good image stabilizer is very important, and here the EM1 Mark II excels to the point you almost don't need one. This next shot, taken at All Saints Church in Margaret Street, London, was handheld at a sixth of a second, with ISO set to 400. And Adam and Eve in St. Bartolf's Church, Hardham, West Sussex, at a tenth of a second, ISO at 200, where, incidentally, there is a fine collection of 12th century wall paintings. Church interior photography requires its own dedicated skill and insight. 
requiring something more than possessing a great photo technique. The classic situation is when a stained glass window is of equal importance as the interior, ending up with an overexposed window because the interior is much darker. This can be avoided by spot metering of the window, allowing the interior to become underexposed. But when saved to raw, it can be corrected in lateral. This may increase noise, a common problem with any low-light photography. But this is just one department where the new EM1 shines. It should be mentioned that overexposed images are more difficult to correct even in Lightroom or Photoshop. And given a choice when and holding, I prefer noise to overexposed images. When handling a new camera, I always look for its ability, or lack of it, to handle contrast. Because of this, landscape views will benefit from spot metering. It is very easy to overexpose a sunrise or sunset on auto or matrix metering. And angel rays can also suffer likewise from even the slightest amount of overexposure killing the subtlety of an otherwise striking shot. Spot metering preserves colour, and if the rest of the composition is rendered underexposed, the raw file can be corrected in Lightroom, in much the same way as a church interior. The Mark II handles these delicate, yet technically demanding situations brilliantly, and with a greater latitude of tolerance enabling the photographer to take risks, even with a touch of overexposure if required. Much of my landscape work demands accurate exposure and precise in-camera digital processing. A woodland scene in winter with low light and a touch of haze provides a challenge for any photographer when shooting into the light. It is difficult to retain detail in the sky and the silhouetted trees in a single shot, especially when shadows are an important part of the composition. I prefer a hint of detail in shadows, but at the same time avoiding burnt out highlights in the sky. Tackling these extremes of contrast from the earlier EM5 to the current EM1 mark Two, have been gradually resolved by Olympus, with significant improvements each time. I still err on underexposure, but the amount of post-production in Lightroom I need to undertake has diminished. I could use a filter, but I prefer to present the pure excellence of Olympus 3 coat lenses for your approval, courtesy of photo techniques in some respects have been forgotten or overlooked. I also tested the camera by shooting directly into the light, but now with the sun in shot. Apart from offering a health warning where composing the image using the camera screen might be preferable to a viewfinder, for this extremely demanding shot I stopped down to f22 to reduce flare and spot metered near the sun. Quite a bit of Lightroom post-production in this case was required. Advanced photographic techniques come to the fore at Sky Garden, which is situated on the top three floors of the Walkie Talkie building in London's Venture Street. Tripods and monopods are not permitted and matters are not helped when views of London must be shot through glass panels that slant at an angle and are covered with finger marks. If you want to make things difficult, try photographing with these restrictions and problems at night. Again, the advanced technology of the EM1 Mark II helps, 
particularly its superior image stabilization system, creating quality images where photographic correctness goes out of the window. The traditional technique is to position the camera as close to the glass as possible to avoid reflections, imperfections in the glass, and even an unintentional selfie. Also, get a friend to stand by your side to mask rogue lighting from Sky Garden's bright interior. The Queen's House Greenwich, part of the Royal Museum's Greenwich in London, allows photography within its walls and is free to enter. By just using the basic camera, pure and simple, the image stabilizer worked superbly and discreetly in this environment, particularly with other people present. The results are impressive, but success will be better achieved by choosing a quiet period. Whilst taking these shots, it rained, which helped to reduce contrast inside the building. Upon leaving, my timing was perfect. The rain had stopped, and out popped the sun, creating a perfect rainbow over Greenwich Reach. However, and dare I say, the skill now was weather forecasting and not photo technique. Many National Trust properties also permit indoor photography, but no flash or tripods. For this programme, I paid visits to Osterley House in West London and Petworth House in West Sussex. Like Queen's House, it was cloudy outside, generating an evenness of light inside, which in full sunlight would be more difficult to control, if not impossible. By the way, the absence of people is because I entered the house the moment it opened, and early in season. A simple example of being in the right place at the right time and demonstrating that research at home beforehand is just as important as arriving to take pictures. The Bluebell Railway, a heritage steam railway in Sussex, gave me the opportunity to test its video capability, a facility that has grown in importance with each release of OMD and pen cameras. The improvement of the video image is immediately apparent, but a development that eclipses this is the image stabilization again. For video photography, a tripod was always essential, something I have never been committed to or found necessary for still photography. There is nothing more annoying in video production than hose piping, where the camera wanders aimlessly around the scene, creating movement instead of recording it. However, the EM1 Mark II can be successfully handheld for video. The image stabilizer now smoothing out any unintentional hand movements. I have kept my review to the basic camera, renouncing accessories, and by sticking to just one lens, the 12 to 50, often underrated because it does not have the pro tag, but its maximum aperture of Factor 3.5 keeps me on my toes, especially as all shots are handheld. I am dead against Photoshop used as an apology for poor photography, but invaluable for replacing what the camera on its own cannot achieve with complete accuracy. Best of all, when saving to RAW, any adjustments in Lightroom, Photoshop, or even elements or other similar products can be undone, which is not possible with some accessories and certain camera settings when saving to JPEG. Whatever we do will not be the perfect answer. I strive for realism, and whilst some photographers may disagree in the way I work, judge me instead by my images 
all taken within four months with a new camera that has impressed me enormously and I am reluctant to return.